Welcome back guys, this is the fourth part of the video tutorial in the, in the, in the previous part uh, on part 3 we, 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 we know we talked about our, our repository pattern in other, uh, uh, we look at into our you know, uh, data access layer code so next thing I would like to talk about uh, you know I'm going into uh, you know in a, in a progressive order like one at a time for starting from domain and you know having database this done now our data access will, you know of course you know when I'm writing this I ha I should have a huge amount of code base I haven't done that one you know I would only be in if you, if I were writing this code into production in I, I mean writing in a real um, my project in my real work project I would have a huge amount of unit tests that's the thing I haven't done you know the, the so next thing I would like to do um, now um, I would like to use my I would like to use my uh, data access layer code into into the controller let me show you um, for instance that's what I did for example you know just to make sure I can persist the, the persist this user um, I wrote a little private class called create vendor of course you know the way I did is like I basically hard coded this value here I just basically created a new instance of vendor and, and basically populated all its properties and then and call using the vendor repository here called the save method right and pass the vendor well of course even before I can do that of course you know I need to know um, a couple of things here okay now this is my uh, controllers as you can see uh, these are my controllers here and this vendor controller it's inheriting from base controller I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the reason why I decided to use a base controller it's always a good idea like sometimes you need a uh, very common method you know, throughout your controller whether you might need that into your vendor category controller or maybe vendor whatever any any controller that you have some some piece of code would be very shareable that's why if you think some method are shareable or some properties or whatever is shareable always a good idea to put that into a base controller this is I, I say okay the base controller and of course you now you have to satisfy that that the uh, then of course you need to inherit the base controller will be of course must be inheriting from the controller so the, you retain this hierarchical chain right and I have this I, I re, you know usually stuff like this like when you're writing code and you see like a duplicate code right away oh you know what I can use that one right there and uh, you automatically uh, figure this out as if, if you write, keep writing the code anyway oh you know even though it's not really related but this I wanna uh, you know, if you remember in our previous video I said that that method is really really cool so I'm, I'm using this uh, repository to basically I'm using this get method in the get method to get the currently logged in user so basically I'm using get and just passing the first parameter if you remember the structure of that method is the first one is a filter the other thing is that you can use the name parameter in C, you know, Visual St in, in C Sharp now so using the name parameter here and using some lambda expression to be saying okay if the user you know basically what I'm doing is I have I have this username property in my object identity user if this username is the same as the username that's currently logged in find that user information right that's what I'm discovered basically and find the user currently logged in into the system and method like this would be useful and so you might need this method in so many places that's why I have this method in the base controller okay that is a little deviation from what I was okay uh, let me close this one okay now I'm gonna slightly talk about the our dependency injection here I'm um, like I, okay, I told you before here I'm doing the you know a constructor dependency injection so I have a vendor I need the vendor information I need the vendor category information and uh, that's why I have these three properties injected right here as a constructor dependency injection and this one be even be of course you know let me slightly show you the configuration of that um, that is inside the app store folder um, here this is all I have to do to make this application compile and build and provide the dependency injection right here of course the very first thing I did I have to register my type application db context and after that 
whenever any classes request instance of this guy instance of this guy in you know, well uses this provide this concrete implementation for i vendor repository provide this you know concrete implementation that's what I'm not going to go into this one because I already did like five videos about this uh, dependency index and as you container and unity. Anyway, that is all I had to do to make this um, work. Make uh, my controller, for example, my vendor controller work. Okay, let's close that one. Okay, the way, uh, of course, the <laughs> I, will, I will come into all of this method later. So now, to explain this, let me go into my uh, my demo. Okay, let me log in. I don't know, it's my application is still running now. Let me go ahead and run it. Okay. I have a user called this in my system. Okay, let's look it into vendor here, okay? Okay, I have two vendors here. And of course, you know, I'm not using um, all the getting and posting the data, everything is, uh, as I told you in the beginning, is done by the AngularJS, passing all the data in the AngularJS. Let's look at, very first thing we're going to look at into is how this the get is really working. To look at into that, we can use, um, I do refresh here as you can see it, it, ha it ca you can see two objects here I don't know uh, you guys are familiar with this uh, Chrome console tool it's a really really awesome uh, you can see this because I have a console.log into that method so as you can see right here I have two objects here it is inside the data it has a two here's my first object look at this all the property that, 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 that I'm basically pulling out from a backend database and then this is my first property here and this is my second property okay of course you know so what happens behind the scene there is a method first we are still on the server side okay first that's what I'm gonna complete the server side first and then maybe after that I will have to go back and forth server side and client side to explain it better it's a method called get all vendors this is a very simple method okay even before that, in <coughs> you know, it's in a, it is. So I have models. I forgot to show you one more thing. I have a models, and then I have a view model. It's not considered good practice, good design to expose all the model model up model object to the view. So it's it's always good idea to you know basically because you know most of the time you, you don't need a lot of information your view not all information is actually needed for your view so that's why you know it's a good practice to create a view model so that's what I have done here okay, here's my view models here's my vendor view model right. In here, you can see all kind of crazy information. Like you can do annotations, and you can see how you would like to display all those things, right? And here is, you know, my vendor uh, category information. So, what I so I was into uh, okay into my vendor controller. So the my database, my my data access layer, my repository deals with the. Uh, deals with the domain object because it provides me the domain object but I would like I don't like to give domain information directly to the view but I would like to convert that domain information into a view model and I will that's the view model is the that is kind of like a projection of the model that is what I would like to give to the view so that is what this code is basically trying to do a and um, of course, you know, you might be thinking, okay, you know, in real life, you are, you're dealing with a huge amount of properties and doing that setting, 
back and forth, you know, setting sometimes view model to model, model to view model. It's a lot of work. Like, you know, it's kind of like 